there has been a major breakthrough, major breakthrough in optical technology. Now, optical fiber is fantastic for speed over distance, but even it has a problem with extreme distances. While up to 200 discrete frequencies of light are being shot through its core, you're going to have to have some specialized equipment to make sure that that light is going to arrive at the edge of the fiber in any coherent fashion. Now, over time, because of the imperfections in the fiber, because of crosstalk interference between the different frequencies, and just basic loss to distance, those streams of data will degrade into incoherent mush. Uh, we have dealt with that problem in two different ways when we string fiber across long distances like, for example, the bottom of the Pacific or the Atlantic Ocean. The first way has been to increase the power of the light that you put into the fiber. Of course, if you put more, fi more light in, you can lose more before it becomes incoherent. The second way, and this, this is really what we had to do, was to use repeaters. We've had to put repeaters in the runs along about every 50 or so kilometers to accept the light Make sure that it's, it's proper, do all the error correcting, and then send it off again. Well, that's great, and it works, but the problem is that becomes very expensive, and that is a very big point of failure. If you lose a repeater, you can lose an entire run of fiber. Well, researchers from the Photonics System Group working out of the University of California, San Diego, have found a better way to bypass both of those solutions. Just use one piece of fiber. That's right. Their solution uses what they're calling preemptive distortion to cancel out the distortion and crosstalk that occurs within the fiber. Think of it like those telescopes that they have with the, uh, the movable mirrors. They can determine what kind of interference they're getting from the atmosphere, and they pre-distort the mirrors so that the distorted, this distorted image coming in into the telescope gets undistorted by the time it gets to the sensors. They're doing the exact same thing but they're doing it with fiber. Their system is called a frequency comb, and it synchronizes the frequency variations across the different light streams to create the inverse of the expected interference. Now, as a result, and this, this is mind-blowing, remember, we, we had to do a repeater every 50 kilometers or so, they were able to push a transmission over 7,400 miles without a repeater and without any costly amplifiers. Now, I, I can't stress enough how big of a breakthrough this is in network technology. Curtis, I wanna throw this over to you first. Those repeaters are one of the big expenses of laying fiber. I mean, yes, you have to rent a specialized boat and a crew and you have to have huge spools of fiber, but the repeaters were always the weak point because since you had to have them every 50 kilometers and since they had to be powered, they were always introducing a point of failure into your transatlantic and transpacific fiber. This, if it works properly and if they can deploy it, this is a game changer, right? Oh, it absolutely is, especially for international communications. You know, as you say, when you mention boat, this is the kind of thing that's important for terrestrial fiber, but it's absolutely critical for undersea cables. Uh, imagine being able to exponentially lower the cost of these undersea cables, both in deployment and in maintenance. Uh, we've already got a lot of cable crisscrossing the ocean floors, but we could see many, many more going back and forth between the east coast of the U.S. and Europe or the west coast and Asia. And that means that the idea of tying global enterprises into one well-synchronized, connected organization are much, much greater. One of the things that this is going to do is this is going to greatly reduce the cost of owning your own fiber. We've seen this more and more. Companies like Google have been getting into the game to actually lay their own fiber because it means that they don't have to rent it, lease it from anybody else. They can say they own it from station to station. Microsoft recently got into this game too, and they, they've built an even higher capacity one than the one that Google has. Lou, let me throw this over to you. This kind of technology makes it possible for even companies that are not the size of a Google, not the size of a Microsoft, to own their own fiber or even own a piece of the fiber. If you can run 200 strands through a, a, a fiber run, you could now have one company say, well, look, we're going to buy one of those strands. And since we don't have to pay for 200 repeaters, we can actually afford this. What, what does that do for fiber capacity? You know, not only does it increase the capacity, the capability, but it also brings it more, makes it more affordable for businesses. If you think about it, this is this is very similar to the whole design of, like, for instance, any of the wireless technology out there. Like we were, we were kind of restricted by the physics of it and by the distance of the towers. 
And then they started to change the way the data was actually transmitted over them, right? More compression, you know, then you hit the, allow the towers to be more, you know, farther distance apart. And this is very similar. This, the internet's gotten to the point where, especially with the need for businesses to have express routes and, you know, high speed uh, between their business uh, and making it more affordable. So this is just the next step. And I think it's, it's going to make a huge difference, especially for service, service providers out there to, to, to allow to bring things down to the smaller business. Absolutely. I, I wish I wish Tebert were here. I, we probably should have talked about the story last week when he was still here. He's actually been on these ships. He knows a lot about laying fiber. In fact, he is responsible right now for trying to reuse a ring of fiber around the Hawaiian Islands to, to bring some backup communication capacity online. But he's in the chat room right now, and uh, he's <laughs> he's mentioning that right now, because there are so few ships that can handle this, this specialized job of laying fiber or bringing fiber up whenever a repeater dies... He says that it could be close to 90% of the cost of laying a transatlantic or trans-Pacific cable associated with those repeaters. So if you take out those repeaters, suddenly the cost of laying a run across the Atlantic might drop from a couple of hundred million or maybe even a billion, depending on the capacity, down to a few million. That's amazing. That's, I mean, when you talk about something that could really change the way that we think about who owns the fiber, well, that's that's definitely one of them. Uh, I, I do want to bring that story up again when Chebert's back. I don't want to uh, derive him of the pleasure of being able to geek out with me. Uh, and actually, I think we're trying to get an expert right now, a person who's actually worked on transatlantic and trans-Pacific fiber who can come into the show uh, and we'll geek out together. So, Chebert, I know you're watching the stream right now and I know you're in the uh, in the chat room. I'll save that one for you, my friend.